when we are working with our leaders and they're dealing with overwhelm, what happens is we recognize that many times it's almost like they go into analysis paralysis and they stop and they freeze and they do nothing. And so I really appreciated number seven, do something, do something. Why is that important? Because we can't just sit around and feel and stay in our feels of overwhelm. We need to recognize, okay, I feel overwhelmed. And now, boom, I need to do something about it. This is Lead with Culture. I'm Kate Volman, and this is another episode featuring Matthew Kelly, where he is sharing the seven ways to stop feeling overwhelmed. Ooh, so good. Stop feeling overwhelmed. We've all experienced it, right? That sense of overwhelm, especially as leaders, we are handling a lot. We are leading our team, growing a business, and then, of course, all the other things in life, because life, right? So <laughs> it can be a little bit overwhelming at times. And I love these strategies because they're simple, because that's what Matthew does. He takes these complex feelings and emotions and ideas, and he makes it very simple for us to be able to actually take some action and move forward in our lives. And so I hope that you enjoy this episode. If you're feeling overwhelmed, you're not alone. It's one of the most common emotions in our society today. Here are seven ways to get beyond overwhelmed. Number one, take a walk. Exercise clears our minds. It literally helps our minds rearrange thoughts and ideas. It relieves stress and releases happy hormones into our bodies. Number two, talk to someone. Just telling someone what you're experiencing can change everything. Even leaving a voicemail saying, hey, just wanted to chat, feeling a bit overwhelmed today, can be liberating. Number three, do, delete, delegate. Divide your to-do list into these three categories. Divide and conquer. This will help you to focus on what's essential. Number four, tidy your space. Organizing your work or living space has a way of reorganizing our thoughts and feelings too. Number five, ask for help. It's a sign of strength and genius, not a sign of weakness. Number six, cancel everything that is non-essential on your schedule for a day or two or a week if that's what's required. Number seven, do something. Start doing something. Don't allow feeling overwhelmed to paralyze you. In action, will only take you deeper into the overwhelmed state. Pick one thing on your to-do list and do it. It's amazing how taking purposeful action can shift the momentum of your day. We all get overwhelmed from time to time. This isn't the last time it's gonna to happen to you, but it is time to develop a strategy to deal with it. In part two of this series, we'll discuss 10 things we forget when we feel overwhelmed. And there you go, seven ways to stop feeling overwhelmed. I told you they'd be simple, right? Simple, easy. We can all do at least one or two or maybe all seven of these things starting right now. But this is such an important topic to consider because especially in today's world, there's a lot going on. As a leader, you're building a team, you are hiring people, you're looking for great talent, you're trying to keep that great talent, you're building a business, you have all of these other whatever else is going on in your life, your family, your spouse, your whatever's happening. It can feel very daunting at times, especially when so many things happen all at once. And so we have to have some tools in our back pocket to be able to get over that feeling of overwhelm. And we work with a lot of leaders at Floyd and this feeling of overwhelm comes up a lot because of everything that I just shared, right? Life, we were all dealing with a lot of things and especially in leadership and when you are responsible for so many people and the growth of a business. And when we are working with our leaders and they're dealing with overwhelm, what happens is we recognize that many times it's almost like they go into analysis paralysis and they stop and they freeze and they do nothing. And so I really appreciated number seven, do something, do something. Why is that important? Because we can't just sit around and feel and stay in our feels of overwhelm. We need to recognize, okay, I feel overwhelmed. And now, boom, I need to do something about it. 
And there's a couple of things. Obviously, Matthew talked about these seven strategies, but I'll add on two more. The first one is to write everything down. Now, whether you call it a to-do list and not to-do list, whatever you need, just many times, we just don't see everything on paper. And when we see a list of all the things that we need to get done or all the things that are on our mind, what often happens is we realize, oh, okay, this isn't actually as bad as I thought. All these things I have to do, I'm responsible for, maybe a decision I have to make. It's actually, I can do this. Because I think sometimes we just swim in our head a little bit too much. And that feeling of overwhelm just builds and builds because we're just stuck thinking through the same thoughts and ideas over and over and over again. And so write down all of those things. Write down your to-do list, what you're feeling, all that stuff. Just write it all, write it all down. The second thing and if you know me at all, you know this will not be a surprise, is to journal. Just to journal. Journal through your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions. Because just like with writing things down on your to-do list and what you have to get done, journaling is an opportunity for you to get those feelings out onto the page. Why are you feeling a certain way? What's the cause behind some of this overwhelm? And sometimes I like to even take it a step further and really write about What's the worst case scenario? Like, why am I getting so overwhelmed about a specific challenge or something that I'm dealing with or maybe some things that I'm dealing with in life? And really just write that all out. And oftentimes I will feel so much better just having got it out. Even if I didn't find a solution to the challenge that I was dealing with, just writing it out made me feel better. And so journaling is a really powerful practice to help us through overwhelm. Another thing that keeps us stuck in overwhelm is perfectionism. A lot of leaders dealing with perfectionism, not wanting to move forward because it's not perfect, the timing's not right, like it's not the perfect time to do something, or maybe you are a little uncertain about the next step, where you should go next, the next move you should make, when really nothing is ever perfect. It might never be the perfect time, but we get to make the decision, take that next step, and then you're just going to get more feedback and data to help you make the next decision and the next decision, right? So we can't sit in our overwhelm for too long. Maybe you need to take a beat, take a moment, but we've got to keep going. And so these are some really great strategies to help move along when you start feeling that overwhelm start taking over. Number two is also worth highlighting which is talk to someone. Talk to someone. Leaders can definitely live in a little silo sometimes where we feel like we can't reach out to some people. We can't have certain conversations. We might not want to be vulnerable or open when really everyone needs that. This is why coaching exists, right? Because coaches need coaches. Leaders need coaches. We all need coaches in our lives. To have that third-party perspective, somebody that we can just talk to openly about some of our struggles, about some of the things we're going through. In fact, I am so appreciative that I do have a handful of people. I have coaches, but I also have people in my life that I reach out to regularly when I just need to talk something through, when I just need to say, hey, I'm just feeling overwhelmed and let me just get this out. Let me just share. I'm not looking for a solution. I'm not looking for you to tell me what to do. I just need to talk it out. And what I love about these people is they are natural coaches. Some of them happen to be coaches in their profession. And so <laughs> all my coaching friends, it's so funny. We always get off the phone with each other. and We'll be like, you know, we can never not be coaching because it's just kind of in us. And I think a lot of people just have that desire to help and support people. And when you do that, when you have friends in your life, you have colleagues, you have people in your industry that you know and respect that you can call and have conversations with, what do they do? They ask you great questions. They ask great questions to help you get out of your head and into more action, into whatever that next right step is for you. And that's what's really powerful about allowing ourselves to talk to someone. In fact, I had a friend of mine reach out to me the other day and she was in this exact state of overwhelm. Just so much going on. She's trying to decide if she should sell her business or not and she really wants to 
have more of just a coaching business and then sell the business that she's been building. But she's been building this business for like 15 years. And then there's also things happening in her marriage and with her kids. Like there's just a lot. She's going through a lot of stuff right now. And she just wasn't sure what she wanted to do next. And she just needed to talk this through. She just needed someone who she could vent to. In fact, at the end of the call, I said, how can I support you? And she said, you just did. Because she just needed to talk it out. She just needed to share it with someone. And so you get to be that for someone and you need that in someone. So who, who is that person for you that you call when you feel overwhelmed, that you just need to reach out and talk to? Because maybe you do that often with that person. But you know what? Today is going to be the day that you reach out to that person just to say thank you. Just to say, hey, I'm calling not because I have a challenge, not because I need to talk through anything, simply because I wanted to say, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are to me. And thank you for giving me the space to communicate openly about my feelings, about my overwhelm, about my frustrations, about things that are going on in my business and in my life. I'm so happy that we have each other to lean on during our most challenging times and during the times that we are celebrating. And so that can be the homework (laughs) today to reach out to someone who you really appreciate because they are that person for you that you can reach out to when you do need someone to talk to. All right. Well, you have two homework assignments then because you get to do that. That is being uh, grateful and thankful for someone in your life. But then also just take a look at this list that Matthew shared, these seven ways to stop feeling overwhelmed. And maybe you've already tried some of these. Maybe you haven't. I think, you know, number four is always a good one. Tidying your space. I think that one is really wonderful because a lot of leaders, we have lots of things going on on our desk and in our offices. And sometimes we just need to clear out the clutter a little bit to open our eyes and feel a little lighter, a little less overwhelmed. So what is one of the things that you're going to walk away with today to start doing to help you feel a little less overwhelmed wherever you are in your leadership journey? Thank you so much for listening to this episode. We hope that you are getting a lot of value out of this show. If you have ever thought about what coaching might look like, maybe you've had a coach in the past, maybe you've never had a coach and you're thinking, you know, I really would love to explore what having a coach would look like. A lot of the topics that we talk about here on Lead with Culture, they are all conversations that really would benefit from a coach. No matter what you're dealing with or going through in your business or as a leader, having a coach, having that third party perspective that you can reach out to on a consistent basis is a really powerful way for you to become the best version of yourself and also to help you become a better coach and leader for your team. So if you're curious to know a little bit more about that and how that might look in your life, then we invite you to go to floydcoaching.com to fill out that form and then someone on our team will get in touch with you to talk through, hey, what are you looking forward to this year? How can we support you in those goals and how a coach is really the way to go this year? So if you're interested in exploring that conversation, we would love to dig into that with you. Thank you again for listening. Until next time, lead with culture.